Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on the Cliff of Beasts playing as the forces of the Wood Elves against the Empire. And for this match uh, I wanted to basically just try a slightly different take on the previous build I did. Uh, and instead of going with a bunch of Eternal Guard, I decided to go with Dryads. Uh, because quite frankly in hindsight, the problem is bring a lot of Eternal Guard uh, for your front line. While it definitely helps deal with Heavy Calf, uh, this build already kind of relies on Way Watchers to deal with heavy calf, and I figured um, against Empire, you know, one of the big problems could be a mob of say state troops. It could be a mob of spearmen, of uh, shielded swordsmen, a mob of flagellants, any of those things. And Way Watchers, even if they can mow through them at least for a little bit, are eventually going to run out of ammo and not really be that effective. So, uh, you know, I figured dryads could be the way to go. So what I've did here is I did bring a front line for dryads, uh, backed by Branch Wraith. Branch Wraith actually has quite a plethora of skills because I wanted to have uh, some solutions for uh, sort of cleaving through backlines if I don't have the Waywatch support at the time. I wanted Melkos Miasma for the slow, Earthblood for the heals, of course, and Awakening of the Wood for a slow again. Uh, he does also have the other Trickster Shard for that magic resistance debuff, and Call of the Woods for the plus 5 melee attack, and of course Smoke and Mirror, so that, because a lot of this is defensive stuff. It's if, if my Waywatchers are being pressured by cavalry, I can pop, say, an Awakening of the Wood here, or hit the cab with Melkos Miasma, it gives it the Waywatchers plus 12% speed, and they can then scurry away just that little bit faster. Of course, we do have a Glady on an Eagle, the only non-Vanguard component of this army. Uh, she has everything. <coughs> uh, even I, even on, on accident, I actually did bring the Eye of Kernis. This is not a skill I really recommend bringing on the Glady. Uh, you just never really get use out of it. I, it only really applies to her most of the time, especially when you're bringing away watchers, so not worth. I did bring the Air of Kernis and the Prey of as well, though, so those will hopefully deliver pretty well. Of course, three way watchers, one of which is the Hawkeyes of Drakira. Against lower end Empire Cavalry, or, and I, when I say lower end, I even mean like Reichsguard and Knights of Blazing Sun, you can often actually break them uh, before they make, make contact, uh, simply by focusing them down and getting that discourage effect from the Hawkeyes. Over here on the flank, we do have the Wardens of Sithral, who are basically just there to screen. Had my opponent sort of uh, been more towards this way, and he had cavalry right on the edge here, the, the Wardens would have been d dead in the way. Um, and from this angle, he would have to get around the, all those dryads. Finally, in the back, we do have Sisters of the Thorn, as well as a single unit of Wild Riders with shields, who, of course, uh, you know, they'll, they'll help in, in melee. If I need to sort of stimmy the enemy cav, just well, buy me time, buy time for the Waywashers, these guys can get in the way and be a nuisance. Regardless, my opponent went with a build that I would not necessarily recommend, but it is a very wide infantry build, which is going to be difficult for me to deal with, because I don't have too many tools to deal with it, uh, except for really the Dryads and Wild Riders. He did bring a heavy cav contingent here in the center, which uh, is composed of a uh, sorcerer, or, or, wow, sorcerer, celestial wizard with Curse of the Midnight Wind as, har as harmonic convergence. Personally, I don't think uh, Lore of Heavens is good in this matchup. I think uh, basically any other lore is going to serve you better. Uh, he does also have a warrior priest who does have the burning, uh, the uh, flaming banner, which is actually pretty cool. It works well against dryads. Uh, he does have benediction. He's got hammer of sigmar as well as shield of faith. He, they are escorting the uh, Zintler's Reichsguard or being escorted by the Zintler's Reichsguard, who I immediately focus down on with the Way Watchers, looking to take them apart as quickly as possible. And of course, Boris is here with full kit on a horse, uh, which is I think uh, the, probably the best lore option in this matchup. In the back, we do have the Silver Bullets on one end, as well as the Sterling's Revenge on the other, two stealthy units, which I think is a solid choice. Though, unfortunately, you can see here, the Curse of Honorary does go down, which is going to slow these guys by a good bit. What I should have done at this stage is hit one of these units, it doesn't even matter what unit, with a, curse, uh, with a, uh, with a slow, simply to allow my Waywatchers to um, keep a little bit more distance between them and the target. Regardless, I do get a nice little charge here into the Zintler's Reich's card with the Sisters of Thorn, rather than utilizing the Wild Riders, because they were unit I'm trying to swing around the flank here, push the wards of Sithral into these spears, and that will open up these silver bullets for rear charge. Unfortunately, I kind of just attack moved here, and <laughs> these drives are just piling into a really stupid central engagement. But, fortunately, this doesn't mean that the, my opponent, the way he's deployed, the Storm's <laughs> Revenge, are going to get blocked out uh, by their friendly friendly troops there. And uh, Storm's Revenge, not a bad choice. The rest of my opponent's army, you know, the usual sort of def a bunch of defensive spears, halberds, which I think are a huge mistake. You don't want halberds in this matchup. Uh, Sigmar Sons, Hammer of Witches, as well as a Mortar. So definitely a significant artillery presence, which my opponent immediately puts to good use, shooting away uh, at my, sis I think, Sisters of the Thorn there. Though perhaps it is the Way Watchers who are getting sniped out. Uh, so definitely getting some good value. But unfortunately, you can see here, we did hit uh, Boris with the Prey of Anathrema, and then promptly tore these two units apart. You can see the uh, Warrior Priest there shattering. The uh, Zittler's Reich's card completely shatters to the uh, Sisters, who are, you know, they're up to th they've got 33 models still. Uh, they 
they tend to survive pretty well. The Warrior Priest does go down to mass fire, and I do then send the Lady after the Celestial Wizard, which honestly I didn't have to bother with. The guy, the spells he has aren't that significant uh, for me, but uh, whatever. We, we are going to try to shut him down. In the meantime, Boris here just getting pounded by Waywatcher fire. Um, and our Wild Riders here successfully get a nice little connection on the uh, Silver Bullets, and we are going to be able to chase them off, though. Unfortunately, Silver Bullets, despite all my buffs, despite all my efforts, are actually going to be able to just barely outrun the Wardens. What I probably should have done here is bounced in with the Wild Riders, done some damage, bounced around, gone from the back. My opponent here trying to desperately set up a defensive perimeter. Uh, you can see I do drop the Shield of Thorns here, which is going to help a little bit. It's going to give the Drides more damage. If we look, and the Branch Raids more damage. We quickly look, the drives you can see up to 41 weapon strength from baseline of 34, which is going to be huge against the Tatter Souls who have no armor. It's going to be decent against the Helper Deers, and uh, you know, it's going to be having an impact. And anytime the Wild Riders here do swing around, I kind of faint in, and now my opponent is out of position. The Helper Deers uh, not uh, positioned correctly. Boris there does snag a Wild Rider, but it doesn't matter. We're going to get on top of the artillery pieces and take them offline, which my opponent is essentially going to lose his last significant threat to my uh, archers with that with this last volley of uh, mortar fire that's gonna be the last we're gonna see so you can see the uh, hammer witches you're getting taken offline by the wild riders we are staying in probably longer than we should against halberdiers but we need to take this artillery offline i really don't want it being a nuisance in the future you can see i do pull the wardens of sith all around uh, now the glady having polished off the caster is coming back um, and my opponent here trying to shut me down with Storm's Revenge. I'm simply going to charge into him with the Silver Bolt. With, with, with the Sister of the Thorn. Uh, get a volley in there with the Hawkeyes of Drakir, which lowers their morale. They get charged by the Sister of the Thorn. And immediately these guys are on the back foot and fleeing. And the Sisters, you know, they'll, they'll run them down um, pretty quickly. Over here, similar to case, we do dive the Glady in there against the Silver Bullets. And immediately push her route. So at this point, my opponent realizing it's kind of game over. Uh, even with my horrible pocket here of <laughs> triads. Uh, all his shooting is offline. Uh, he's on, down to a very beat up Boris and just a handful of state troops. Uh, he realized that was a game. So, a few lessons here. Uh, one, this, this I think is a pretty functional build for high, Wood Elves if you're just trying to beat down Empire. Um, not sure if it's better than the Eternal Guard build. I do in some ways like Eternal Guard just for their anti large, but at the same time, if you go, get caught out by a very wide Empire force, uh, you're in a bit of a pickle. Because wide Empire armies, you, your Wave Watchers won't be able to kill that many swordsmen. Um, and uh, Eternal Guard actually lose the swordsmen in a 1v1. Empire, swords, Empire swordsmen are one of the <laughs> more cost effective, actually. And I don't think people realize it, but they're actually one of the more cost effective uh, melee inventory. They've got they've got very solid melee stats, melee defense of 32 and attack of 32. Uh, some solid attack damage. Some, and uh, so they're definitely not what you want to be fighting as the Wood Elves. And. Um, yeah, they, they definitely do well. So I think Dryad's ear might be the better choice just to deal with that chaff and leave your Way Watchers and the uh, Wardens and the Wild Riders and the Glady and all that to deal with heavy calf. Now, if you're playing as Empire, there's a few options on what you can do, and you might even want a mix of everything. Frontline should be shielded infantry and preferably cheap shielded infantry. Like this this build right here is not what I would really recommend. I'm actually going to, you know what, why, why not hop into a quick custom and uh, you can always look at my wonderful. Uh, naming and techniques there for uh, games, but regardless, we can hop into a custom real quick, and I can kind of demonstrate what I, what a build that I would probably bring. Now, I do think the choice of Boris is very good. I don't think that's a bad decision. Uh, Boris is just very solid. He is very hard to kill. Um, he's a fairly small target on a horse, even for Way Watchers. He's got built-in physical missile resist, as well as shield, and he's got regen. Um, he does have, of course, some solid debuffs and melee, uh, which can help your troops an immense amount. Uh, depending on what sort of build your opponent com comes in with, but you always need to be ready for that kiting, for the for that harass. Uh, and, and the best counter to harass is really to bring heavy calf. Um, and you need enough heavy calf to overwhelm. Now keep in mind, it, it, yes, it would also have some very solid anti-large option builds, but most of those are on foot or um, they're war dancers that way, spears, which are quick for foot infantry, but they're not that fast. Uh, and they've got uh, eternal guard, so. Which are very slow, honestly, by elf standards. They're comparable to they're like a little faster than swordsmen, maybe. So they're not slow, slow, but they're they're pretty slow. So for a front line here, we'd bring Sigmar Sons and some swordsmen. Um, let's say for once we're not going to bother with great swords. Sometimes I do bring great swords just to decisively win that front line, but uh, let's say we don't bother with that. Um, for a second line uh, roster, we can bring the Hammer of Witches. Is not a bad choice in this matchup. Uh, the you have to be wary of making sure it's far enough back to be safe. Um, you know, let's say we could even do like a heavy artillery sort of focus. We can bring two mortars, hammer of witches, and then this sort of front line of those troops. 
Now for a caster, that's where there's a little bit of toss-up. I think just about any caster has potential. It kind of depends on what you want to go for. If you want to do a lot of damage with mortars, for example, you could bring <laughs> Flaming Sword of Ruin on a fire caster and uh, buff your mortars up that way. Get some good value. Um, you can also get some value with piercing bolts and that sort of stuff. So Bright Wizard can work, and of course it works great against trees. Um, Jade Wizard has the benefit of Earth Blood as well as the benefit of Regrowth and Shield of Thorns. Shield of Thorns, if you're trying to run enemies down, can be very valuable. Uh, Light Wizard is something I see pretty often just for the net, catch enemy f troops, and then, uh, and then, uh, not Shem's Burning Gaze, uh, Baroness Time Warp or Foss Protection. Uh, just to either close the gap a little better or st sustain in melee a little better. Uh, Great Wizard for the slow, uh, viable. I think this is one of the less recommended uh, ones. I like recommend a little less. Amber Wizard actually also has a surprising niche here. I think with uh, Pants and Penetrable Belt, and you can really choose whichever one of these you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Or your Curse of Honor can also help you a little bit. It kind of depends what you. Once again, it kind of depends on what you're going for. But um, let's say I decide to go with uh, Jade Wizard, just to go on, be on the safe side, just to have that sustain. So we bring a Jade Wizard, we throw him on a horse. I'm not a fan of barred horses. If your opponent tries to snipe you out, you're not, barding's not going to help. Uh, we could bring Awakening of the Wood. No point in Flesh to Stone. Wood else have way too much AP to make that matter. Dwellers below completely waste. Um, you know, we can consider Awakening of the Wood. I'm not sure I would. It kind of depends on how much money we're going to have left. Um, and now what cavalry to bring. Now I would recommend Knights of the Blazing Sun simply because they are a little faster. And Zintler's Reichsguard because they uh, have immunity to psychology and they've got higher leadership baseline. Now you could try to get a normal Reichsguard in here, but if we look at the stats, if we drop Awakening of the Wood here to make a little room, get a little wiggle room in there, uh, we're not going to be able to fit in another unit of Reichsguard. So we could, what I'd much rather do is just get Zintler's Reichsguard in there, drop Deadly Onslaught, on, you know what, we might actually be able to get another Rex card in there. No, we won't. <laughs> We're just barely shy. So, we'll, we'll do like that. We'll drop Deadly Onslaught on Boris, because I think Foe Seeker's better against Elves. Uh, and we've got a we've got a formation here. Um, a decent formation. Otherwise, you can drop the Empire Knights and use that ad additional freed up space to make room for some additional Swordsmen. Um, or you can bring, like, two Spears and uh, have a few Chevrons to invest in these guys. Or a few chevrons to put into the mortars, because mortars are one of those units that gets massive benefits from being chevroned up. Uh, they get much more accurate. So, you could you could do builds sort of like this, and it's very artillery heavy. You don't have any shooting uh, of your own other than your artillery, but honestly, if your opponent brings glade riders, you're just kind of to zone them out. You're going to zone them out and shoot them with the hammer, which is, uh, if your opponent brings any other shooting, you're going to have to run them down with heavy cav and then shoot, chip away at them with mortars. Um, like I said, there's other ways you could do this. You could, there's other takes you could make. Um, but this is the sort of build I would, I would recommend uh, if you're trying to deal with what else. Um, and, it, and like I said, there's other there's other ways you could do this. You could drop one here, drop that, and make room for a silver bullet and a spear. And uh, boom, you got and you can shove around the mortar. You can do something like this. There's a lot of different variations. Uh, but the end result is you get a wide front line that can soak up. You've got heavy calf to run down your opponent's tr missile troops. And um, and you've got artillery pieces to sort of harass them and whittle them down over time. So regardless, I do, I do apologize. It was a little long-winded, more discussion here than the actual battle. The battle was pretty short, but I don't want to discuss this matchup and just kind of go over what I think is the more competitive take on things. So as usual, guys, I do appreciate do appreciate all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, as usual, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. I appreciate any support that, I, that you guys give me. Uh, if you have any comments, any criticism, as usual, don't hesitate to post them. I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. Um, once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.